Hello and welcome back. So this is the crystal placement video. So I've got all my crystals out. Um, I'm just having a look and seeing which ones will match. And um, what I'm gonna do, I've got, you've got it from uh, eBay, some um, crystal gel. I do, I'm not gonna lie, I do, I do struggle to um, secure bigger crystals. So I'm just trying different things at the moment. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm marking out where I want it to begin. She said she wanted like to flow from starting at the top of one and at the bottom of the others. So what I'm doing first is I'm doing these index fingers and I'm using those little pink crystals there, them teardroppy one. No, not teardrops, are they? Leaf shaped, I don't know. Um, and I'm marking out where I want the base to be. Um, making sure that they're in a place where I want it. Making sure that I've sealed around the edges with that gel and then I'm going to come in with a brush that I'm dipping into gel residue wipe off solution to wipe the gel off the nail before I cure it I don't know if this is how you are supposed to do this I'm winging it no one's ever actually shown me but you know if you've used like blobs of acrylic to secure them down if it's not smooth and you're going to have like a lump on the nail and I'm planning to put a load more crystals on so that is why I'm doing this I'm just showing you this bit just so that you know you can see the full method. I'm doing these indexes first so that I made sure that they look as similar as possible. Um, and that's gonna be like my starting point so that both hands look similar if you think about it going up in a straight line. And then I'm gonna cure it under the lamp for a minute. Right, so now that's done, I'm picking up some more of that um, gem gel and what I'm doing, and I did this on both hands uh, and I started with the left, her left hand and at this point the left hand's got loads of crystals on I'm then applying the uh, gel up around where I want it to be uh, so that I can make sure that it all flows together And then I'm also going to keep checking my other hand for reference because I want them to be as identical as possible. But what I did with the other hand is I used a gem gel. I might keep saying gem glue, but this is not gem glue, this is gem gel. Um, and then as you can see on the other hand up in the top corner, you can see I've used the bigger crystals as like the top of the crystal cluster. So we've got like a straight line, so it kind of they all meet together ish. They all meet together ish. So they all flow. So I'm applying my big gems first and I'm using that other hand as a reference point to make sure that they look as similar as they can. Um, setting it all in to there, making sure that I've wrapped the gem gel around the uh, bigger clusters of crystals and then again I'm going to get that little brush dipped in gel wipe off solution and I'm going to smooth it all out so there's no lumps and bumps and then I'm going to cure it in the lamp for one minute.
and then I'm going to show you this hand now. What I'm doing now is I've got my um, Trilogy Gem glue, which is like normal nail glue, but it sets slower, so you've got longer to work with those crystals. I put some glue on the nail, and then I'm picking up all my individual crystals, and I am setting them in around the big clusters, just trying to make it look balanced. Um, filling in any... I just want... I can't... I can't really explain it very well, but I do use Instagram for inspiration. So I search like hashtag Swarovski nails, hashtag nail crystals, hashtag crystal nails. And I look at people's designs and say, okay, I quite like that idea. Um, there wasn't anything like this on Instagram though. There wasn't, uh, I didn't know what to search, you know, how like swooping crystals. But um, I'm picking up different sizes, bigger ones to fill in the bigger gaps and little ones to fill in the little gaps. I want it to look as, uh, I don't want it to be all lumpy bumpy on these nails. I want it to be nice and smooth. Uh, one thing that I'm not doing though, trying not to do anyway, is I'm trying not to put the crystals above on these middle two fingers, the um, ring finger and the middle finger. I'm trying not to put many crystals above the top line of those big crystals because that would then affect the overall flow of the crystals. Again, this is just how I do it. it, it some people might want crystals above and actually at one point my client did actually ask for me to put the crystals above and I was like, well, I don't want to, but I did. And as soon as I put it on, she was like, actually, no, you're right, take it off. And the beauty with that gem glue is then I could take it off because it hadn't set, so then I could do that. So I'm just picking up different colours and different shapes and just trying to make sure that the colours match the nails underneath to a certain extent. Um, no crystals are going on the thumbs because we're just going to leave that ombre to be shown off. So I'll just let you watch me finish doing this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to top coat around them. moving everything out of the way and I've got a tile just a normal kitchen tile that I like to use although I am going to get one of those like amethyst sheets when when I'm, I'm getting like a little salon thing that I'm gonna do up so I'm gonna get one for then I'm just cleaning it actually mean to uh, keep this bit in but actually it's good so I've got some uh, acetone and I'm just wiping over this to make sure that there's no uh, what's it called pigment from the orange set that I did and nothing make it see paper's already yellow because I don't want to then put the top coat on here and it be um, getting you know muck and stuff in it so then I take this time I'm actually using a shiny top coat even though the nails are gonna be matte place a blob of it or two onto the tile as you can see there and I get a fine detailer brush I use a very sharp detailer brush this time but I actually think I could have got away with using a bigger one 
and what I'm doing with this is I'm applying the shiny top coat in between the crystals to make sure that I've sealed it in. I'm not going to go over the whole nail, I just find sometimes that um, this top coat in particular um, seals better than the matte. This step here, I've got just got some um, quite strong wipe off solution which I do believe actually has a bit of acetone in it and I'm wiping off any of the wax so that it keeps it shining because if I seal in that wax then it, it's just going to lose its shine. When I've done that the glue underneath has gone white because it's dehydrated itself, I've dehydrated it but when I put the top coat on the white disappears and if it doesn't then I, what I do is I sort of swirl the tip of that detail and brush on it and rub it in a bit to make sure that that white's gone away. Oh uh, yeah, so I've, I've sped this up because you don't need to watch, um, you need to watch it in real time. I really sped it up because it's a fiddly process. Um, I've just put it in for 10 seconds to cure just because I don't want to knock it out, bleed out or anything anywhere. Um, and then I'm coming in and doing the other ones and then into the lamp for a full minute. With a, a matte top coat um, and I'm just applying this on the actual nail and around the crystals and I'm going to push that brush up against the edge of the crystals again to give it an extra seal in and I'm running my fingers down the side of the nail to make sure that I don't lose any of that nice shape that I spent so long making. The cured, and this is a Kira Kira video. We've added like some sparkle into it, it's a bit much, but you get the idea. Um, and here is without the extra added effect matte nails with super, super shiny, beautiful crystals. So, here we are, and that's the finished set. So, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you like it. If you do, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you on the next one. Love you, bye bye.